When it comes to financial advice, you got to trust the source. It's why you listen to this podcast. When I'm looking to upgrade my wallet, I turn to NerdWallet. Their expert team of nerds dives into the details to help you find smarter financial products. Before NerdWallet, I was paying for vacations all wrong. (laughs) I was missing out on miles. I didn't even know I was leaving on the table. Now I've got a new card with more miles and more upgrades. What could future you do with more travel rewards? I don't know, maybe that fancy hotel upgrade that you have always been dreaming about. Wherever you go next, make it happen with a smarter travel credit card. Don't wait to make smart financial decisions. Compare and find smarter credit cards, savings accounts, and more today at nerdwallet.com. NerdWallet finance smarter. As with all cards, credit is subject to lender approval and terms apply. Millions of people have lost weight with personalized plans from Noom, like Evan, who can't stand salads and still lost 50 pounds. Salads generally for most people are the easy button, right? For me, that wasn't an option. I never really was a salad guy. That's just not who I am. But Noom worked for me. Get your personalized plan today at Noom.com. Real Noom user compensated to provide their story. In four weeks, the typical Noom user can expect to lose one to two pounds per week. Individual results may vary. Are you ready? 2023 is right around the corner. I think it's time to set some money intentions for 2023. Let's jump into it. Welcome to Everyone's Talking Money Podcast. I'm your host, Shauna Game. There's no judgment, no dumb questions, just smart conversations about you and your money. So come on in and grab a seat. Everyone is welcome here. Hello, my friend. Welcome to almost the very last episode of 2022. I love this episode, setting money intentions. Resolutions just feel like (laughs) things that never happen, right? I love this idea of intentions. It's a a feeling you want to have. It's it's things you want to accomplish, right? But you're thinking about it from a, I think, a more holistic perspective. So when I sat down to write out this episode, this year's Setting Your Money Intentions, I went back and listened to the episode I recorded last year, 2021, going into 2022, and I was just like, yeah, I would pretty much say all that same stuff over again. Like, this is how I feel about intentions, and this is what I really want to say and communicate to you. So rather than re-record everything over again, I'm just going to bring you back the episode that I did exactly at this time a year ago, because I think... Every single thing that I talk about when it comes to setting money intentions is still a thousand percent valid. And so when you're listening to this episode, just sub in 2021 for 2022 and 2022 for 2023. In fact, just throw out the years altogether (laughs) because I think they actually don't matter, right? It's this glorious idea that it's the end of the year, the beginning of something new and we have this time to kind of reset, to rethink about our habits and our patterns and our feelings and our relationship with money and all the amazing things we want to do. And the beauty is that we can actually do this any time of the year. We don't need to wait until the end of December to do this, to set these money intentions. So I hope you listen to this episode. You kind of throw out the years and you just think about, you know, what do I want to do with my money on a daily basis? How do I want to feel what do I want money to provide for me in my life? What is the vision I have? How am I going to use money as a tool this year? And less of of something that brings in fear and worry and scarcity and doubt, right? So when you listen to this episode, I want you to just really think about that, right? Let, let it sink in and think about what are the intentions, specifically the money intentions that you want to set for next year. All right, my friend, let's jump into it. It's not a secret that I am a big fan of intentions over resolutions. I do this episode every single year, every single year. You love this episode. So hopefully you're starting to warm up to this idea of intentions over resolutions. 
I think resolutions lead you down a path of either you did the thing or you didn't and you failed. And I really don't like this idea of perfect or failure when it comes to your money. I mean, I saying I don't like it is really an understatement. I really hate the idea of perfect or failure when it comes to money. You aren't a failure if you didn't hit your savings goal this last year. And when you feel like you failed, you're not at all motivated to continue. So I bet you can think of so many instances when you tried something with your money and it just didn't work out. So you immediately thought, oh, well, that whatever must not be for me. It must not be for me to buy a house. It must not be for me to pay off my debt. It must not be for me to start the business, whatever it is. But that kind of thinking really plays into the scarcity thinking that we as a collective society has built. And I am just calling bullshit on that. I do not want you to live in a scarcity way of thinking anymore. I don't want you to live in a place where you think you're not good enough, that you don't have enough, that you can't change your life, that you can't step into what you want to be and do. All right. So that's it. I've just called bullshit on it. (laughs) So my hope is that you accept it. What do you want to focus on is the actual progress. That is the progress. Thinking about what do I want it to look like? How do I want to do things differently going forward? That, my friend, that is progress. So did you manage to save any money in 2021? That's progress. Did you manage to pay off some debt in 2021? that's progress. Did you manage to at least have some days when you weren't totally anxiety ridden about money? That's progress. Were you able to have one small maybe money talk with your partner? That's progress. Were you able to go on a few money dates each week or a month, or maybe you only did it once? I don't care. That's progress. I want you to celebrate what you did do. I want you to celebrate the progress that you did have, even if it's really small and it feels so insignificant, it doesn't matter because that is where real change starts to happen. So when you're thinking about intentions, this is the playground to play in. The literal definition of intention is a thing intended or an aim or plan. So what are you aiming at? And then what is your plan to move towards that? Not Intention is not, did I do the thing or not did do the thing, right? It's a thing that is intended, an aim or a plan. So our plans can change, our aim can change, it doesn't matter. We just have some sort of direction. So again, not that you did it perfectly, but did you have an aim? So let's focus on your aim, your intention. Here's a a great quote that I love. I'm hoping it resonates with you. Set intentions before you take action. Blind action is sometimes worse than no action at all. And I'm probably going to butcher the name, but this was said by uh, Ikarak Brost. Again, forgive me if I've mispronounced that. But I love that idea that blind action, just kind of going around with our eyes closed, is actually worse than taking no action at all. So setting some sort of intention, moving towards something, and then being okay if that changes. So if I could sum up my number one piece of money advice, as you think about your intentions, it would be this. Are you ready? I feel like I need a drum roll somewhere. (laughs) Going directly to the money how-tos will leave you scratching your head as to why things didn't work. So if you go straight to the how-to investing, straight to the how-to budget, straight to the how-to buy a house, straight to the house to anything, You're going to wonder, why did that not work out? If you first start with the behavioral side of money, how you think, act, and feel about money, and then you head to the how-tos, you're going to find success. So what I mean, let me give you an example. Let's just say you really want to pay off debt. Student loan debt, credit card debt could be any kind of debt. And you go first to the strategy, to how to pay it off. And you're like, this is not working Nothing is actually happening here, right? I want you to first go to that place of why did I get in debt? What were the triggers? What was happening? What was happening emotionally, mentally, 
physically, environmentally for me to get into debt and work on those factors and cultivating new habits there. Then we go to the how-tos and we just plug in the money and it starts happening. So there's this powerful science around money that when we attach feelings and emotion to our goals, they happen. So it's not enough that we just say we want to get out of debt or we want to buy that house or we want to do that thing, whatever it is, we have to attach some sort of feeling and emotion to it. How will that make you feel to pay off that debt? How will that change your life? I want you to write it out. I want you to put post-it notes all over your wall, whatever it is. I want you to connect your emotion, how you feel about that with the actual goal, because that is going to keep you motivated to move forward. So I thought there would be no better way to bring in the new year than to focus on something that I know will change you in your finances in more ways than you can imagine. And that's the act of money mindfulness and really creating a healthy money mindset. So our mindset has a lot to do with our current situation. You've heard that saying that you are either a glass half full person or a glass half empty person. And it's all about how you look at your situation. And there's not exactly a right answer or a wrong answer. It just is. So let me give you an example again. We'll go back to the debt payoff because that is something that so, so many of us really want to achieve. But if that's not your goal, you can just literally insert in whatever your goal is. So it's easy to say things like, I'll never get out of debt. I'll never be able to afford that house or build a strong retirement fund or I've made too many money mistakes or I just can't seem to figure out how to budget. So I'm just, I'm just I'm not going to do it. These statements are universal and they don't change no matter how much money you're working with. We could plug in any amount of money and the, still these sayings are going to resonate. So they're, they're powerful because every time you say a negative statement like this to yourself, you are manifesting, cultivating, creating, fill in the blank with whatever word feels good for you, that sentiment to the point that you're starting to believe it at your core. So the more I say things like, I'm never going to get out of debt, I'm never, I've made too many, I just can't, the more you're going to believe that in your core And that thing is actually not going to change. You're not going to be able to get out of debt. You're not going to be able to afford, et cetera, et cetera. So I don't want you to beat yourself up if you've had these thoughts. The reason I'm sharing this with you is because I have these thoughts all the time. (laughs) And I am constantly trying to work on this. We all do. If I surveyed everyone listening right now to this episode, you would all raise your hand at something. But what I want you to do is replace those negative not truths with things that are true. Things like, I will save $50 this week in my house fund because I can do this. I will pay off $100 this month on my credit card or student loan or whatever it is. And that is going to get me one step closer to being debt free. Or I don't know how to invest wisely, but I'm going to read a book or listen to a podcast or ask a friend or learn one thing that will help me. Or yeah, I've made more money mistakes than I can count, but who cares? Those are in my past and I'm making good decisions now going forward. And I don't have to be perfect. I don't have to pretend to be perfect. It just doesn't exist. And nobody is the judge of me except me, right? So what I mean is change those thoughts every time you catch one sneaking into your brain. Because scarcity and negative thinking about money, they're going to keep you stuck in this paradigm of perfectionism that isn't doing you any good. So how you think about your progress, how you feel about your progress, and then the action you take is far more important than the actual act of knowing what to do with your money. I hope that makes sense. So it's my belief that the entire money system was created for us to fail you and me both, created for us to stay in debt because it's beneficial to many companies, many institutions. Having a lower credit score is financially beneficial to many businesses and institutions. 
I mean, even keeping you in a place where you feel like you can't do whatever in life because of the size of your bank account keeps others prospering. And I really want to change this. I really want you to focus on this idea of progress over perfection, that I can celebrate my progress. I don't have to worry about being perfect, nor do I have to get stuck in all of the mistakes of the past. All right. So then the question remains, what are your money intentions for 2022? Financial anxiety, anyone? Yeah, you're not alone. But worrying about it, it doesn't help. Earnin does. Earnin is an app that gives you access to your pay as you work up to $100 per day or up to $750 per pay period. You just download the Earnin app and verify your paycheck. Then you can access up to $100 per day as you work and leave an additional tip. Any money you access plus tips are automatically repaid from your next paycheck. So how would you spend the money you get from Earnin? Well, honestly, my hubby and I have been feeling a little bit disconnected lately. That's what happens after you've been together about 12 years. So I would spend the money on a special date night with dinner and maybe bowling you know, to bring back some of that giggly excitement that we both felt at the beginning. Make Earnin a part of your financial routine and join Earnin's over three and a half million customers who say things like, when I think about Earnin, I think about financial stability, security, gives me a lot of peace of mind. Download Earnin today, spelled E-A-R-N-I-N, in the Google Play or Apple App Store. When you download the Earnin app, type in Talkin, T-A-L-K-A-N, money under podcast when you sign up. It will really help the show. Talkin money under podcast. Subject to your available earnings, location, daily max, and pay period max. See earnin.com slash TOS for details. Earnin is a financial technology company, not a bank. Bank products are issued by Evolve Bank & Trust, member FDIC. Listen, if you've been using Mint to manage your money, I have got some news for you. First, the bad news. As you might know, Mint is shutting down for good. But the good news, well, there is a way better alternative that is a personal favorite of mine, Monarch Money. And I'm not the only lover of Monarch Money. Many Mint users are turning to Monarch Money and just raving about it. I used to manage my money with an Excel spreadsheet. I know, so archaic. And it was so time consuming. I tried all of the apps but I just didn't find one I liked until I found Monarch. And I've got to tell you a secret. Monarch is so easy to use with a very intuitive design. You can even collaborate with your partner and you can customize Monarch for whatever your needs are. Monarch is the top rated all-in-one personal finance app. It gives you a comprehensive view of all your accounts, investments, transactions, and more. Create custom budgets, set goals, and collaborate with your partner. And now get an extended 30-day free trial when you go to monarchmoney.com etm. Let's go back to the collaboration bit. Because we know money is a leading cause of divorce and breakups, Monarch has built-in collaboration features so you can invite your partner at no extra cost. You can see all your finances, make a budget together, get insights on your cash. Yes, cue the confetti. There will literally not be any more arguments over money. And if you've been frustrated with personal finance apps that are cluttered with ads, difficult to use, or rarely updated, so was Monarch. They built a new kind of personal finance app that's intuitive and powerful ad-free, and constantly improving based on customer feedback. Monarch has a tool that allows you as well to easily import your data from Mint. You can keep all of your tags and all of your categories. After trying Monarch for myself, I understand why it's the top-rated personal finance app. And right now, get an extended 30-day free trial when you go to monarchmoney.com slash etm. That's M-O-N-A-R-C-H-M-O-N-E-Y dot com slash etm for your extended 30-day free trial. I'm Samantha Cole, host of the new season of Understood, The Pornhub Empire. Over the course of four episodes, I'll tell you how a horny YouTube knockoff in Canada came to dominate the porn world, only to shatter their cheeky reputation in a massive scandal. The Pornhub Empire is a new season of Understood from the CBC. Available now wherever you get your podcasts. So the first step, if we're going to start setting our money intentions for 2022, is to write out what I call a wouldn't it be cool if list for the year. So I don't want you to censor yourself on this. I want you to write down everything that you want to do that would be really, 
really cool if it happened. So to give you an idea, here are a few things from my list. So one would be, I could take a month off every year to travel to Europe. Of course, once COVID is firmly in the rearview mirror, uh, I want to create better balance between work, family, and just living. That is something that I am not very good at at all. So balance is definitely one of my words for 2022. I would love to have a house with a podcast studio and a killer kitchen and a bathtub to end all bathtubs. I don't know if you're a bathtub person, but oh man, there's nothing like a great bath at the end of a day. Uh, Another intention would be uh, that my earning power was unlimited and not bound by traditional rules of success. So I just think that would be really cool. I think it would be really cool if Millennial Money Podcast reached a million downloads a month and more lives were changed as a result. It'd be so cool if I could help fund lots of different things from providing hearing aids to those that couldn't afford it, to financial literacy centers, to offering free money help and advice, to helping other couples be able to afford adoption. Those are just some of the things that are really important to me. I think it would be really cool if I learned how to make pasta in Italy. I don't know. Are you up for that one? I just would love to do that. I think it would be cool to get in the best mental and physical shape of my life. And I think it would be really cool if I finally felt comfortable in just being me and I embraced all of my quirks and I didn't have to feel like I was apologizing for who I am. So your list, your wouldn't it be cool if list, it can be anything personal stuff, money stuff, career stuff, relationship stuff, silly stuff. It's your list to make your own. So create this list. I set a timer for like half an hour on mine. So I wasn't just kind of endlessly stuck in like a continuing time loop. I gave myself kind of a dedicated amount of time. You can do this however you want, but keep this list somewhere where you can come back to it often. I keep mine in a Google doc and whenever I'm feeling down or frustrated, I come back to it. And these lists, they seem really silly, but they're important when you're serious about setting intentions and then achieving them. So think of the wouldn't it be cool if list is almost like your your foundation, right? Now we need to get a bit more serious. So I want you to create a separate list of your top money intentions for the year. For example, I won't get stressed out about money. I'm going to pay off that last bit of student loan debt. I'm going to create a side hustle. I'm going to build up my emergency fund. I'm going to create a separate stream of income. I want to create more cash flow. I want to learn how to do X, et cetera. It could be anything. Again, anything in this list and really honestly, as long as you want it to be. I set a timer again, just because I'm the type of person that will sit for hours creating these lists and it doesn't need, it doesn't need hours. It just needs top of the, the head brainstorming, right? So once you're done, With this list of your top money intentions for 2022, I want you to come back and circle the top maybe three or four intentions, the things that really sing to you and stand out. And you're like, yeah, I am doing those things in 2022. Again, they don't have to be totally actionable things. Like it isn't, doesn't have to be a thing that I'm going to pay off debt, but it could be a thing again about, I, I need to have these conversations with my partner about money or I just want to feel better. I just want to feel happier. I don't want to feel stressed out, right? So they can be doing anything, anything that really resonates with you. All right, so pick your top three to four. So I've been doing a lot of reading about the difference between those that achieve goals and those that don't. And did you know that only 8% of people actually achieve their goals? Only 8%. That really blew my mind. That just seems outrageous. So I became curious. Why then are 92% of people missing out and stuck in this loop of setting goals and intentions only to miss them? So you may have felt that way. I know I certainly have in many years. I look back at some of the years and I'm like, what did I actually do? I don't know if I actually achieved anything in that year. So Of all the people I've worked with, spoken to, we've had over 760 episodes on the show, so that's a lot of conversations. I found some tricks to setting intentions and being in that 8% of people who actually achieve them. 
So with your list of your top three to four intentions, I want you to think about or break them down in this way. So number one, who can support you in reaching this goal or intention? You need a support system. So every singer you love, movie you adore, successful person you know, they all had a support system. So who is that person or people that can be there that are non-judgmental, that are going to celebrate with you the success and pick you up when things maybe don't go so well? So I normally don't suggest a family member because, well, you know, (laughs) family can be a little tricky. And sometimes we feel like our family members might judge us or they might give us information or direction based on them and what's best for them. And you need somebody who's going to give you direction and support and celebrate your progress that is all about you. So you've got to find somebody who can detach from themselves long enough to do that. So the number two thing is I want you to get really specific. You know, they say the devil is in the details, but honestly, your intentions and goals need to be specific and potentially even challenging, right? Something that really motivates you to move out of that comfortable box. So if it was easy, you would have already done it. But that doesn't mean you can't succeed. You just need to get specific. So let's say one of your intentions, again, I'm using debt payoff just because we all know this. Fill it in with whatever works for you. Great. That's that's specific, but that's not going to happen. But what about if you set your intention like this? In January, I'm going to pay an extra $50 towards this debt, then towards that debt, then towards this next debt, et cetera. And I'm also going to cook four meals a week at home, which will be more delicious and satisfying than eating out. And then I'm going to take that cash and put it towards these debts in this order. I will also reframe my negative thoughts around debt and my mistakes into positive ones, knowing each day I save a little, I'm one day closer to being debt free. See how much more that intention comes alive than just saying I'm going to pay off debt? It's specific. It's challenging and it's actionable. At the end of January, you can see your progress. That, 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 that is where the magic lies. So do this for each intention that you have. Get specific and give yourself a challenge that you know you can succeed at and attach that emotional component to it. Okay, number three, I want you to throw out the idea of multitasking. I don't even know when or how it became hip to say that you were an expert at multitasking. I have claimed this for so many years. I'm like, yeah, I'm so good at multitasking. Like, give me 10 things to do at one time and man, I'm going to shuffle through those 10 things. But it isn't until I realized that if I focused on one thing at a time and worked in chunks of time, I actually achieve more, right? Go figure. (laughs) Light bulb moment. So you've got your intentions, work on them for a few minutes a day, but be conscious when you're looking at your spending or figuring out what to do with your extra cash from your side hustle or whatever your intention is, be intentional. And then after you've given it some focus, do something else. The one and only way I've seen people be able to hit goals is to break them down into little chunks. So each day doing one more step and knowing when to stop and leave it for tomorrow. Trust me, it works. Took me a long time to learn this, but it works. Another thing is to build in rewards. So you had an awesome January, right on, like take yourself out to the movies or buy that pair of sneaks you want. I don't care what it is, but build in a reward system that is small, of course, so I don't want you to pay off $200 in debt and then go spend $200 on your reward. That doesn't really get you anywhere. So think of something that that's small, a number that feels somewhat inconsequential to you, but still is going to feel like a reward. So there's a lot of science behind this celebration aspect of our intentions and moving closer to our intentions. There's an article in an online publication called Brilliant Living, and they called out six reasons why you should celebrate success. So here's one that really stands out to me. It says, 
There's a reason why it feels good when we celebrate success and to do it with neuro-happy chemicals in our brain. So dopamine is released into our brain when we anticipate achieving something or when we achieve it, and it just feels good, so we want more of it. We also get it from not such healthy pursuits, so why not build lots of opportunities for the dopamine rush into what we do want to do, like setting small goals, so we have lots of chances to achieve success. I really like that. So you know the dopamine hit. (laughs) If you've had sex, you know the dopamine hit. (laughs) If you've landed a new job with with a big, huge salary, or even a small increase in salary, you know dopamine effects, right? So dopamine is this chemical in our brain. So what it's saying is that when we celebrate success, dopamine is released and our brain goes, wow, that felt really good. Okay, let's do it again. So you feel really motivated to take that one tiny step every day towards your intention. So it's all about tricking your brain and your body and your mind and all sorts of things that, again, it's this idea of not being perfect, but that we're moving closer. And so that's what intentions bring to us. This idea of this is what we're intending to do. We're going to take an aim at this. If it doesn't go as planned, all right, we're just going to change the intention or change the plan or change the aim. That's all it is. So rather than setting a resolution where it's all about this pass or fail, we're saying, nah, we're giving ourselves more freedom to play around with this stuff. Without the ones like you who work tirelessly to keep things running, everything would suddenly stop. Hospitals, factories, schools, and power plants, they all depend on you. No matter the weather, emergency, or time of day, you're the ones who get it done. At Granger, we're here for you with professional-grade industrial supplies. Count on real-time product availability and fast delivery. Call, clickgranger.com or just stop by. Granger for the ones who get it done. From Foreign Policy, I'm Rena Ninen, the host of the Hidden Economics of Remarkable Women. Over the past few years, we've looked at how women around the world are changing societal norms to increase their economic power. This season, we're focusing completely on girls, how they're pushing for a brighter, more powerful future, and what the rest of us can do to set them up for success. Join us for stories about girl power, young women who are fighting for change, to give themselves a chance to live a life of their own choosing. That's season six of The Hidden Economics of Remarkable Women, wherever you get your podcasts. And lastly, I want you to just pay attention again to what's going on in your brain. What is your mindset today? Where do you want it to be? And what do you need to do to get there? I think the most meaningful discovery I've had in life is that I actually get to choose my thoughts and that I can change negative thinking. Now, I'm certainly not an expert at this, and I am learning along with you, but this idea that I actually have a choice in what I'm thinking is really powerful. So particularly when it comes to my money, I can I can change those thoughts. It's, yes, it's not going to change the money in my bank account, but I can change those thoughts. There's another great article actually on WebMD of all places that talks about the scarcity mentality and the effects of it. So it says, Scarcity mentality limits your brain function. So scarcity mentality affects your ability to solve problems, hold information, and reason logically. It also affects your brain's decision-making process. A scarcity mindset limits your ability to plan, focus, and start a project or task. Your brain is too busy thinking about something you don't have. That is how our money system has been set up to have us all operate in this place of scarcity mentality that holds us almost hostage to making plans, to focusing, to starting a project, to making progress. So when you feel like you're swimming in a sea of lack around you, you can't make good money decisions. You can't plan. You aren't motivated. You're just focused on the lack. And we all have been there. So your intentions are working to counter this very real behavioral side of money by telling your brain, no, this is what I want. I'm making progress. I'm celebrating that progress no matter what. And I'm not obsessed with the achievement, just the progress. So lastly, you've got your wouldn't it be cool if list. 
you've got your top three to four money intentions for the year. One last tip is something I just started to do. You can only really focus on one thing at a time. So why not give each month a theme around your intentions? Maybe January is just get my stuff organized month or create my money system month. Maybe February is set up my debt payoff strategy and March is commit to four money dates. Seriously, there could be anything that resonates with you, but by no means do you need to stick to your themes. They just give you something to focus on and to continue turning your intentions into reality. So I want to say a very, very quick thank you for a great 2021 on the show. And I'm so looking forward to 2022. In case you haven't heard, we're changing the name of the show in late February, which will be our seven year anniversary of the show. And I'm going to be announcing the name in January. I'm going to be taking you on the journey a little behind the scenes as we change all sorts of stuff. And the content's not going to change. We're going to have so many more guests, more great tips and strategies, more chances to connect on a deeper level with the show and with me. And so much more is planned for 2022. So one thing you can do for me, whether you're listening to this episode in 2022 or you're still in 2021, is head to Apple Podcasts. I will drop the link in the show notes and leave a review for the show. The reviews are how we continue to grow and they mean so much to the show and to me, even the negative ones. So thank you for being a huge part of the show's success, continued success It is because of you, because you tune in, because you share these episodes with friends and family members. It is the reason why the show is still standing strong and growing seven years later. So thank you so much to you for that. And big cheers to you for 2022. We're going to do big things in 2022, but we're not going to be focused on them necessarily having to be big, right? We're going to focus on this idea of progress over perfection. All right, my friend, there you have it. We are going to start setting some amazing money intentions. I really think every day, right? Let's not, again, wait until the end of the year. Let's do this regularly. Let's think about how we want to interact with money in a new way. That's what I want for you going forward. So if you enjoyed this episode, share it with a friend or family member. And if you haven't done so already, head over to the link in the show notes to leave us a review for the show. All the reviews help us continue to get some amazing guests on the show and continue to grow the show even further than we already have. And just a big, big thank you to you, my friend, for being here, for being a listener, for just helping this show be what it is. I couldn't do it without you. So thank you again. I'll see you back here in a few days for the last episode of this year. We've all spent more time with family lately. It can feel like old times, but your mind is on the future too and what you can do to shape it. At Sandy Spring Bank, we work with clients to help them grow and protect their money with wealth management, trust services, and insurance so they can enjoy today and ultimately pass along their wealth. We believe real banking is a conversation. Let's talk about your dreams. Visit sandyspringbank.com wealth. Wealth and insurance products are not FDIC insured, not guaranteed, and may lose value.